Hello everyone, welcome back to Physics Galaxy. Remember when we made a guess in our last video about who would win the Nobel Prize in Physics this year? Well, guess what? We got it right. Ferenc Cross, and L. Hillier and Pierre Agostini instead of Paul Corcum won the Nobel Prize in Physics 2023. Today, we are going to talk about Pierre Agostini, Ferenc Cross, and an L. Hillier the winners of the 2023 Nobel Prize in Physics. These three scientists were awarded the prize for experimental methods that generate attosecond pulses of light for the study of electron dynamics in matter. What is attosecond? Attoseconds are the smallest unit of time, equivalent to one quintillionth of a second. One attosecond is equal to 10 to the power of minus 18 second. If we were to this in the form of 0.00 and so on, and we would need to write 18 zeros before the numeral one, this is equivalent to billion of a billionth of a second. An extremely short time period. We can think of this as barely an instant in time. This is the time it takes light to travel across the diameter of an atom. Agostini, Cross, and L. Hillier have developed new ways to generate attosecond pulses of light. These pulses of light are so short that they can be used to study the motion of electrons within atoms and molecules. In this video, we are diving into the incredible work that got them this prestigious award. Let's see what these scientists did to earn this recognition. Back in 1925, Werner Heisenberg introduced a new concept in quantum mechanics focusing on observables rather than the unobservable, such as the elusive electron's position and orbit. Electrons in pulses of light, through their experiments, this year's laureates have created flashes of light that are short enough to take snapshots of electrons' extremely rapid movements. And L. Hillier discovered a new effect from laser light's interaction with atoms in a gas. Pierre Agostini and Ferenc Cross demonstrated that this effect can be used to create shorter pulses of light than were previously possible. The hummingbird's 80-fold wing beat is difficult to observe due to the blurred movement and blurred sound. To capture these brief moments, technological tricks like high-speed photography and strobe lighting are used. This year's laureates demonstrated a method for producing brief light pulses that capture images of processes inside atoms and molecules. Atoms' natural time scale is incredibly short, with atoms moving in femtoseconds. The age of the universe is estimated to be 13.8 billion years old. This is the amount of time that has passed since the Big Bang, which is thought to be the beginning of the universe. The age of a heartbeat is approximately one second. This is the amount of time it takes for a human heart to beat once. An attosecond is a unit of time that is equal to one quintillionth of a second. This is an incredibly short period of time, and it is the time it takes light to travel across the diameter of an atom. A femtosecond is a unit of time that is equal to one quadrillionth of a second. This is also an incredibly short period of time, but it is longer than an attosecond. The image is trying to show that the age of the universe is incredibly long compared to the age of a heartbeat. It is also trying to show that attosecond pulses of light are incredibly short compared to the time it takes light to travel from one end of a room to the other. Shorter pulses with the help of high overtones. Light is made up of waves with different wavelengths and colors moving through a vacuum faster than anything else. The shortest possible pulse of light is the length of a single period in the light wave. In the 1980 as the wavelengths used in ordinary laser systems were considered a hard limit for the shortest possible bursts of light. 
To create shorter pulses, it is possible to combine more and shorter wavelengths. To access the briefest instant ever studied, laser light passes through a gas, causing overtones, which give a sound its particular character. Anne L. Hillier and her colleagues in 1987 were able to produce and demonstrate overtones using an infrared laser beam transmitted through a noble gas, contributing to the theoretical understanding of this phenomenon. The red guitar is a symbol of the musical analogy that the laureates used to explain their work. They compared the overtones of light to the overtones of a guitar string, which are higher frequencies that are produced when the string is plucked. The diagram shows how different overtones of light are created when a laser pulse interacts with atoms in a gas. Escaping electrons create overtones. When the laser light enters the gas and affects its atoms, it causes electromagnetic vibrations that distort the electric field holding the electrons around the atomic nucleus. The electrons can then escape from the atoms. However, the light's electrical field vibrates continuously and when it changes direction, a loose electron may rush back to its atom's nucleus. During the electron's excursion, it collected lots of extra energy from the laser light's electrical field and to reattach to the nucleus, it must release its excess energy as a pulse of light. These light pulses from the electrons are what create the overtones that appear in the experiments. Laser light interacts with atoms in a gas. Experiments that created overtones in laser Light led to the discovery of the mechanism that causes them. How does it work? Now look into the image presented on the screen. In first case, an electron that is bound to an atom's nucleus cannot normally leave its atom. It does not have enough energy to lift itself out of the well created by the atom's electrical field. And in the second case, the atom's field is distorted when it is affected by the laser pulse. When the electron is only held by a narrow barrier, quantum mechanics allow it to tunnel out and escape. And in the third case, the free electron is still affected by the laser field and gains some extra energy. When the field turns and changes direction, the electron is pulled back in the direction it came from. Now in the fourth case, to reattach to the atom's nucleus, the electron must rid itself of the extra energy it gained during its journey. This is emitted as an ultraviolet flash, the wavelength of which is linked to that of the laser field and differs depending on how far the electron moved. And light's energy is linked to its wavelength with emitted overtones containing ultraviolet light. These overtones vibrations are proportional to the original laser pulse's wavelength. Light waves with specific wavelengths interact, increasing intensity when peaks coincide and decreasing intensity when they coincide. This leads to a series of pulses of ultraviolet light, which were first identified and tested in 2001. Pierre Agostini and his research group in France succeeded in producing and investigating a series of consecutive light pulses, like a train with carriages. They used a special trick, putting the pulse, train together with a delayed part of the original laser pulse to see how the overtones were in phase with each other. This procedure also gave them a measurement for the duration of the pulses, in the train and they could see that each pulse lasted just 250 attoseconds. At the same time, Ferenc Cross and his research group in Austria were working on a technique that could select a single pulse like a carriage being uncoupled from a train and switched to another track. The pulse they succeeded in isolating lasted 650 attoseconds and the group used it to track and study a process in which electrons were pulled away from their atoms. This is an example of experimental setup. Here the, the laser light is divided into two beams 
where one is used to create a train of atosicon pulses. This pulse train is then added to the original laser pulse and the combination is used to perform extremely rapid experiments. And this image depicts an experimental setup involving a pulse train, filter, delay, combined beam and observation point. The pulse train generates atosecond pulses, the filter selects specific wavelengths, the delay adjusts the timing and the combined beam combines the two. The observation point measures the atosecond pulse's interaction with target atoms or molecules. This setup allows for control over electron dynamics, revealing insights into ionization, excitation, emission, and scattering. Electrons' movements have become accessible. Atosecond pulses make it possible to measure the time it takes for an electron to be tugged away from an atom and to examine how the time this takes depends on how tightly the electron is bound to the atom's nucleus. It is possible to reconstruct how the distribution of electrons oscillates from side to side or place to place in molecules and materials, previously their position could only be measured as an average. Atosecond pulses can be used to test the internal processes of matter and to identify different events. These pulses have been used to explore the detailed physics of atoms and molecules and they have potential applications in areas from electronics to medicine. For example, atosecond pulses can be used to push molecules which emit a measurable signal. The signal from the molecules has a special structure, a type of fingerprint that reveals what molecule it is and the possible applications of this include medical diagnostics. And this was a short description of their work. Thanks for watching. To get updated stay tuned with Physics Galaxy. Thank you.